Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this flame game development series where we are making a simple platformer game using the flame engine. In the last video, we added the ability for players to be able to attack enemies by jumping on them. And that pretty much completes all the gameplay features that I had planned for this series. Now in this video, I am going to add some common menus to this game like main menu and pause menu using the overlay APIs from Flame. The first step in doing this will be to extract out all the gameplay related code from our game class into a separate component. This will make it easier to start, stop and restart the game just by adding or removing this new component. So let's create a new file in game folder called gameplay.dart. In this file, we'll have a gameplay class that extends a component. I'll quickly override the onload method for this class so that we can start moving code from onload of our game class. Okay, so from here, we just need to move the load level and add HUD call to gameplay. Then next, let's also move the definition of load level method from game to gameplay. And finally, we'll also have to move this current level member. Okay, now let's just remove all the unused import from game.dart and then add them in gameplay.dart. Next, in level.dart, you can see that we are getting an error for load level because this method is now moved to gameplay class. So to make this work, we need to get a reference to an object of gameplay component here. Now, the way we have designed this, we know for sure that any level component will only ever be added as child of a gameplay component. And we can enforce this in code by adding the parent is a mixin to our level class. This mixin ensures that the component it is added to can only be attached to a parent component of given type. So here, I'll specify the type argument as gameplay. Once that is done, in the spawn actors method where we are getting this error, instead of calling load level on game ref, we can simply use the parent getter. And as you can see, because we are using the parent is a mixin, the type of this getter is automatically set to gameplay. Okay, so now that all the errors have been resolved, let's test if the game still works. But since we moved all the gameplay related code into gameplay component, we'll have to explicitly add gameplay component to this game in onload. And if I run this, you can see that the game is still working. But you can also see that the HUD is now static in the game world. This happens because position type for HUD is position type dot viewport. And as of flame 1.2, such components are supposed to be direct child of main game class. So this means we'll have to add the HUD component to our game class here instead of the gameplay component. To get a reference to the parent game, I'll add the has game ref mix into this class. And then in the onload, we can call this add method on game ref. If we save this and go back to the game, you can see that the HUD is working properly now. But there are still some problems in our code. The first one is we are adding the HUD component to game ref while loading gameplay. But what happens when gameplay component is removed? With this code, the HUD will still remain in the game world even when gameplay component is removed. But we don't want that. Ideally, HUD should also get removed along with gameplay. So for that, I'll first store HUD as a final member in this class and then I'll override the onRemove method to remove HUD from game ref. Now the next problem that we have is in the HUD component. In the onLoad method, we register some listeners for score and health. Since the HUD can be added and removed multiple times during a game session, we will be adding new instance of listeners every time a new HUD component is created and attached to the game. To avoid this, when HUD is being removed, we need to make sure that we also remove the listeners. And to do that, we'll have to convert these listeners into methods. So I'll create two new methods called onScoreChange and onHealthChange. And then I'll move these lines into the respective new methods. But as you can see, we can't reference score text component and health text component here because they were local variables in onload. So let's convert them into late final members of type text component in this class. Okay. Now in add listener call, we can specify name of these new methods. And then to remove these listeners while the head is being removed, I'll override the on remove method and call remove listeners on score and health with on score change and on health change as input respectively. 
Okay, so now we are ready to start working on the menu system. First, let's remove this add gameplay from on load of game.dart. Instead, we'll now add a main menu with a play button which will do this when pressed. So as I said, for the menus, I'll be using the overlay APIs from Flame. Overlays are basically normal flutter widgets stacked on top of the game widget. If you want, you can read more about overlays on Flame's documentation. Okay, so first, let's create a new folder called overlays in our game folder. This is where all the overlay widgets will be stored. So let's create a new file in here called mainmenu.dart. This file will contain a stateless widget called main menu. In this class, I'll store a static const string called id which will store name of the class. This is not necessary but storing the string id like this makes it easier to refer it later while adding or removing the overlay. Next, I'll add a final member of type simple platformer in this class and add it as a required parameter in the constructor. Again, this is not always necessary but I am doing this just because I know that I will need access to some of the methods from the parent game object. Now in the build method, I'll just add some standard flutter widgets to essentially create two buttons. First one displays play and second one displays settings. For now, let's keep the on pressed callbacks for these buttons empty. Next, we need to tell Flame that we intend to use these widgets as overlays. And to do that, let's go to the game widget in main.dart. Here, first let's specify the type parameter for this game widget as simple platformer. Then, let's use the overlay builder map to specify the overlay widgets. This property just needs a map with key as string and value as a callback that returns a widget that we want to display. So, for the first entry in this map, I'll use mainmenu.id as key and then in the callback, I'll return a main menu widget with its game ref input as game. And finally, to make sure that this main menu overlay is displayed right from the beginning, I'll set initial active overlays to a list containing only main menu.id. Now, if I save this and go back to the game, you can see that we now have these two buttons. I'll quickly add sized box with some constant width to these buttons so that they have same width. You can design your menus however you want. This is just pure flutter code. And next, to make the play button actually start the game, we'll first need to remove the main menu overlay and then add the gameplay component to this game. So in the on press of play button, I'll first call remove method on gameref.overlays passing an id of current overlay. And then I'll add a new gameplay component to gameref. Let's save this and check in the game. If I click on the play button, you can see that the game starts. Okay, the next button is settings button. But since we don't have anything to display in settings yet, I'll leave it for the next video. Instead, let's add a pause menu. For that, I'll create a pause menu.dart file which will contain a stateless widget pretty much similar to main menu. I'll just change the name of class, constructor, the static string id and the text displayed by the two buttons. First button will display resume instead of play and second button will display exit instead of settings. Even the code for on pressed of resume button will be almost the same. Just instead of adding gameplay component, we'll need to call engineer. For the exit button, I'll first remove the current overlay then resume the engine and then add the main menu overlay. This should take players back to the main menu when exit is pressed. And to make the pause menu a little bit transparent, I'll reduce the alpha value of scaffold's background color. Ok, now that the pause menu is ready, let's add a way for players to pause the game and see this pause menu. I'll do this by adding a sprite button component on the HUD. So in HUD.dart, at the very end of onload, let's create a new sprite button component called pause button. The button property of this component needs a sprite. So I'll create a new sprite from the sprite sheet stored in game ref. If I open the sprite sheet, you can see that at the fourth index, we have a pause icon. So I'll use the source position as vector2 of 32 times 4, 0 
source size as 32 by 32. Then next for the size of sprite button component, I'll again use 32 by 32. To place this button at the top center of the screen, I'll set its position as vector2 of gameref.size.x by 2 comma 0. And to have it perfectly at the center, I'll also change the anchor to anchor.top center. For the on press, let's keep it empty for now. Now before we can add the pause button as child of HUD, we need to add the hash tappables mixin to our game class. This basically tells Flame that some of our subcomponents need to receive tap events. Now back in HUD.dart, we can add this pause button to HUD. If we save this and test in the game, we'll be able to see the pause button, but the on press won't get executed. I'm not 100% sure about this, but this appears to be a bug and the only way I could make it work was by explicitly setting the position type of pause button to position type dot viewport. I hope this gets fixed in the future updates of Flame. But anyways, now if we save this and check the game, you can see that we are getting a pause button at the top center. Let's now add code to actually pause the game and display the pause menu. But before that, I'll change the Y coordinate of pause button's position to 5 to have some margin from the top edge. Now in the on press, I'll just call gameref.pauseEngine to pause the game and then I'll call the add method on gameref.overlays passing in pausemenu.id to display the pause menu. And finally, back in main.dart, we'll have to add an entry for pause menu in the overlays builder map just like main menu. Now let's test this in the game. And as you can see, when I press the pause button, the game pauses and we see the pause menu. And on pressing the resume button, the game resumes normally. Also, if I press exit, we are presented with the main menu. But if I press play now, you can see that the game starts, but it appears to have two players in the level. In fact, all the components are doubled. This happens because while exiting, we didn't remove all the existing components from the game. As a result, when we press play again, everything gets added again. So to fix this, in the on press of exit button, I'll call remove all on game ref, passing in game ref dot children. This should remove all the components when we exit to main menu. Let's save this and test in the game. Okay, and it seems to be fixed because we don't see the additional player component now. But if you look carefully, you might have noticed that now the score is acting weird. For example, right now the score is 7. If I exit and restart the game, you can see that the score is reset to 0, which is fine. But as soon as I collect a coin, the score changes to 8. This is happening because we are not resetting the player data while loading a new gameplay component. So to fix this, let's go to on load of gameplay. Here, after adding the HUD component to game ref, I'll just reset value of score to 0 and health to 5. Let's try this out in the game to see if it works. So while exiting, you can see that the score is 3. Now if I restart the game again, score is displayed as 0 and once I start collecting coins, it increases by 1. So this is working as expected. Ok, now that the pause menu is working, let's implement a game over menu as well. Again, I'll create a new file called gameover.dart and this time I'll use code for pause menu as base or game over because it already has the transparent background and code for exit button. Let's quickly change the class name, constructor name and static string id to game over. Then in the build method, the first button will display restart instead of resume. And luckily, half of the code for restart is already here. After removing current overlay and resuming the engine, you just need to remove all components from game and add a new gameplay instance. Ok, now let's see where we can check for game over condition and then display this game over menu. We can do this at multiple places, but the on health change method of HUD component makes the most sense. In here, we can check if the value of health has reached 0. 
If that is true, I'll pause the game and will add the game over overlay. And finally, in the overlay builder map, I'll add a new entry for game over widget. Now let's save this and test it in the game. And as you can see, we do get the game over menu when our health becomes zero. And if I press restart, the game starts again, resetting health and score back to their initial values. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.